program is about beginnings, about origins. And if you want to ask, what was the origin of the universe? Or if you want to ask, what will be the fate of the universe? Or what's the structure of the universe on the largest scales? Those questions are the central questions that one asks in cosmology. Cosmology is a discipline that's somewhere in between astronomy, looking at the stars, and physics. And it's an old, it's an old discipline. People have wondered about these questions for a long time. Not to be confused with cosmetology, that's another <laughs> old discipline. Um, but something interesting is happening in cosmology now. And that's because of a kind of confluence of advanced mathematics, physical theory, and the technology that lets us send observatories into space and satellites that can see in all directions, they're not confined to the Earth, and computers, modern computers, big data, taking all of that information that's flowing from these observatories, analyzing it, looking for patterns that otherwise would be invisible. So this is a kind of golden age, really, of cosmology. There are many things happening now that could never have happened before. The last 10 or 20 years has seen cosmology mature into a science. It's not just looking at the stars and wondering. You can propose theories, you can test them, you can find out they're wrong. So that makes it really interesting. By the way, uh, this talk will not be on a cosmological time scale. <laughs> To let you know. I just want to tell you about one thing, one uh, idea that's really on the cutting edge of research in, in cosmology, and that's this idea of the multiverse. The multiverse, many universes. It's a controversial idea. It's a controversial idea even among uh, cosmologists, even among people who study it. And it's a controversial idea because it's not obvious that it's a testable idea. It's not clear that you can falsify it if it's not true. But what I'm going to tell you about is a way in which we could confirm that there really are other universes, at least in a sense that I'll describe to you. So maybe this shouldn't be so surprising. After all, the Earth is not unique, really. You all know that there are other planets in the solar system. So pop quiz, how many people think there are eight planets in the solar system? Nine? And of those who think there are nine, how many think that Pluto is not one of them? Just like Pluto, and that's it. <laughs> Pluto got demoted. Pluto got demoted. Pluto is no longer considered a planet. But there is evidence for planet nine, not Pluto, something else out there. We don't know yet. But anyway, there are other planets in the solar system. And there's a pretty wide variety. Jupiter, for instance, is very different from the Earth. Mars, you can maybe grow potatoes. It's not so different. So there's a bunch of planets out there. And another thing that's happened very recently in astronomy are this discovery of thousands, now thousands of exoplanets, just means planets orbiting other stars besides the sun. So now we know literally of thousands of them, and this is very recent, this is the last couple of years. So we know they come in a wide variety of types, some of them are like Jupiter, some of them are more like the Earth. They seem to be just about everywhere, just about every star has planets orbiting it. And we already knew that there are a lot of stars, stars are easier to see because of course they emit a lot of light, planets are hard to see. Um, so we already knew that there were billions and billions, hundreds of billions, actually, of stars in the Milky Way. That's our galaxy. That's that streak across the sky that you can't see in New York. Um, so we already knew there were a lot of stars. Now we know there's lots of planets. We know there's lots of galaxies. There's actually tens or hundreds of billions of galaxies in the part of the universe we can see, and each galaxy contains hundreds of billions of stars. So what's next? Maybe there's something beyond that. Maybe there's a multiverse. Maybe there's something beyond what we can see, which has a lot of variety. And so that uh, is the basic idea, and I'll, I'll tell you a little more. Let me give you an analogy. Imagine that you lived on an island. You and your family and your extended family, you live on an island in the middle of a huge ocean. And as far as you know, you've always lived there. Your ancestors lived there. One thing about this island, it's got lots of fruit trees, animals. You can grow crops, but there's no, well, fruit trees. Fruit shrubs, let's say. There's no big trees. You can't build a boat. So you can't explore beyond the coast of this island. And you can climb to the highest point and look out, and all you see is ocean in all directions, as far as you can see to the horizon. So you don't know if there's anything else. And none of your ancestors knew. But people have been living on this island for a long time, and they started wondering about geology. 
And they came up with some theories. They decided maybe this island originated from a volcano. There was an eruption on the ocean floor, and, and the island came into being, and that's how it started. And if there was one volcanic eruption which created one island, maybe there were more. Maybe there are more islands. There should be more islands. Why would there only be one? So that's a theory you could come up with, and you could be criticized. People could say, oh, but we can't see any other islands. We don't have any boats, so we can't sail out and look for them. So this is just, you know, speculation. We're never going to find out. It's untestable. But not exactly, because imagine you're walking along the beach, and you see something there, and you look, and it's a piece of wood. It's a log from a species of tree that doesn't exist on your island, which washed up. And now you know for certain there are other islands, even though you can't go there and even though you can't see them. So human knowledge is limited, and especially in cosmology, it's limited. But nevertheless, we can learn things. We can learn things about very distant events. And so it might be that the multiverse actually is testable. So why would we think it's there? What's the analog of this theory of geology that says maybe there were other eruptions in other islands? Well, in modern cosmology, theory seems to point us in the direction to say that the origin of our part of the universe wasn't actually the origin of everything. It was an event, a quantum nucleation of a bubble. Kind of like, is this a champagne crowd or more of a beer crowd? I think it's more of a beer crowd. So let's say you have a <laughs> glass of beer. A bubble of, of gas can, can appear in that glass of beer, and it will if you stare at it. People will wonder what you're doing. But if you look, you'll see little bubbles appear spontaneously. And then they rise up and dissipate. But, but they appear in the liquid. And so, um, in a similar way, we think that our part of the universe originated in an event like that. There was a nucleation, but not just in some liquid, in the fundamental or nearly fundamental laws of physics. In other words, um, the state from which that bubble appeared was very different from what we see around us. It was very rapidly expanding, among other things. It was very, uh, gravity was very strong in it. There's probably no, nothing living there. There's probably no structures, there's no stars. Nothing can hold itself together. It's expanding so rapidly. But if this process can happen, if a bubble can form, if that's the origin of our part of the universe, then surely it happened again. There are other islands. There should be other bubbles. There should be other bubbles in this universe. Now, you might wonder, why can't we see them? What's the analog of the horizon? And the answer is interesting. If, if you watch a fireworks display or lightning, you hear it after you see it, right? You see a flash of lightning, and a few seconds later, you hear the boom of thunder. And if you count, then about five seconds is one mile because of the speed that sound travels. So you can figure out how far away it was by the delay. There's a delay in sound. There's also a delay in light. It doesn't move instantaneously, but it's so small. It moves so fast in such a short period of time for lightning that you will never notice it. But when you look at the sun, the light from the sun takes about eight minutes to get from the sun to us. So when you look at the sun, you're seeing it as it was eight minutes ago. And when you look at the stars in the sky, you're seeing them as they were years ago, sometimes many years, depending on how far away they are. And when you look through a powerful telescope at the furthest away things you can see, you're seeing the universe as it was a very long time ago. The further out you look, the further back in time you see. And if you look out about 14 billion years worth of distance, 14 billion light years, then you're seeing the universe as it was 14 billion years ago, and the universe as it was then was like the inside of the sun. Everywhere in the universe was like the inside of the sun. It was a hot plasma. It was also opaque. The sun is opaque. It's full of light, but if you beam a laser pointer at it, it doesn't come out the other side. It's opaque. It absorbs the light right away. The universe was like that as well. So you can't see any further than that because you just hit this wall. You look far enough back in time, which means you look far enough, far enough away. You can't see past that. So that's the horizon in cosmology. That's why we can't look arbitrarily far and see these other bubble universes that ought to be there. So we have to ask our analog of our, our volcanologists about the theory. What do we expect for these other bubbles? And what the theory says is that they should be very different. There should be a huge diversity of these bubble types. There should be all different kinds of bubble universes. Some of them may have very different what we think of as the laws of physics, the forces of nature, will look different there. Particles will be different, electrons, photons, protons, and neutrons, that sort of thing won't exist necessarily in these other bubbles. Something else will. Even in string theory, at least, which is a theory of fundamental physics, there might be a different number of dimensions in these other bubbles. They can really be very different. So this is a great idea, I think. But 
is it really science? It's kind of untestable, right? You have this multiverse, how are you going to see these things? But don't forget, the islanders discovered other islands by finding a piece of driftwood. They got lucky, basically. They found a piece of driftwood. So maybe there's something like that. And in fact, there might be, because when bubbles form close enough, when they nucleate close enough together, they run into each other. That's a cosmic bubble collision. They can run into each other, and this is a very energetic event, as you might imagine, the collision of two universes. It injects a wave of energy into our universe, which propagates across it at the speed of light, and it leaves behind a pattern of ripples, which wouldn't be visible in the night sky, they're not visible in the stars in the Milky Way, but if you look on larger scales with a bigger telescope, they could be. And in fact, we can predict mathematically what these signals should look like, especially in this ancient light. This, when the universe was like the inside of the sun, it was full of light. That light is still around everywhere. It's not light anymore, it's microwaves, because the universe expanded by so much. But the universe is full of microwaves. Not as hot as the inside of a microwave oven, fortunately for us, but it's full of a faint background of microwaves, which we can detect. And there are multiple satellites, balloons actually, and ground-based experiments that looked at these microwaves. And that ancient light should contain a trace of these ripples, if such a bubble collision took place in our past. So we may never know. It could be that this whole theory is nonsense, there were no collisions, there's no other bubbles, there's no other islands, that's possible. It could be that there are other bubbles, but they haven't collided with ours yet. Or they did, but the, the collision left too faint of a trace to be detected. Or it could be that it hasn't happened yet. Maybe our children will prove that this theory is true. But the fact that it's possible at all, to me, is really an amazing thing. So thanks very much.